How's it going guys? It's Ryan here and welcome to this Lava Strike Worms Slayer Guide. Uh, so some info about Lava Strike Worms, they're combat level 115, they've got a max hit of 5000 plus, technically it's 50% of your max life points. Uh, they have 30,000 life points themselves, they attack with all three combat styles depending on uh, if you're within melee distance. If you're within melee distance they attack with melee and magic, and if you're outside of melee distance they attack with magic and ranged. Uh, they have no weakness, they grant you 1,872 Slayer experience per kill, and they're assigned by Kuradel and Morvran. Okay, so in terms of requirements, the only actual requirement to fight these is level 94 Slayer. Uh, this can be boosted from level 89 with a Wild Pie. Okay, so now into the recommendations. I'd recommend you have at least 80 plus attack and strength, that should be an S, uh, 80 plus magic, 80 plus range. Uh, whatever combat style you decide to use, you can use whichever combat style you want. Make sure you're 80 plus. Uh, 37 plus prayer is a good idea for protect from magic, although 70 is even better. Uh, it's great if you've got 96 plus summoning for the pack yaks, you can yak away your drops. And also overloads are good to have, or even supreme overloads if you got them. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to get there. There are kind of three main ways. Uh, first way is the Lava Titan. Don't do that because then you can't bring a useful familiar. Uh, wilderness Obelisks also don't do that because you can end up in 50 Wilderness and hopping around forever to get there. And then the way I would recommend and the way I'm going to show you guys is the Waka Canoe. Okay, once you've made sure you've only got three or four important uh, items of value, uh, basically just run across the bridge uh, to the canoe station and you're going to create yourself a Waka Canoe. Uh, just a quick note, it's slightly above level 30 wilderness, uh, but make sure you've got a teleport out that is a level 30 wilderness teleport. Something like an Amulet of Glory or a Ring of Wealth will work. Now, board this Waka Canoe, take it to the wilderness, and you're going to run a little bit west, a little bit past the wilderness obelisk uh, right there. Uh, and you'll see in just a second, uh, you've made it to the Lava Strike Rooms. Congratulations! Okay, so now we're going to talk about gear setup. Uh, pretty much choose any combat style, it's up to you, uh, but just remember only take three or four items of value if you're planning on putting the Protect Prayer item on. Ah, sorry, if you're... <laughs> okay, so now into the gear setup. Uh, choose any combat style you want, doesn't really matter, uh, but remember only take three or four items of value if you want to use the Protect Item Prayer or Curse, uh, because you are in the wilderness and there are PKers. Okay, so now we're going to talk about ability bar setup. Uh, I didn't include a mage one, but it's effectively the same thing. Uh, basically, some abilities you want to make sure you have. Uh, you want to make sure if you're mailing that you got this ability right here, my A ability. And if you're maging, uh, ranging, you want to make sure you got my R ability, because these abilities currently, they take down protect uh, prayers. So if some PKR tries to attack you and you want to fight back, uh, it's good to have those on your action bar so you can take down the prayers and try and kill them. Uh, that's not super crucial for actually killing the strike worms, but it can be a fun thing to do. Uh, now, other important abilities, uh, which is mostly for getting rid of PKers, make sure you got Freedom and Anticipation and Devotion, as well as Surge. So these last four abilities, and uh, they're right there over here, make sure you've got them as well, because if you're making an escape and you've got these four abilities on your action bar, uh, you're good as gold. There's almost no way they're going to kill you. Um, aside from that, you just want kind of straight DPS abilities, kind of whatever you want, whatever your normal ability rotation is. Uh, depending on what weapons and combat style you're using, but make sure to have the abilities I've highlighted either on your ability bar or open um, in the actual like ability menu tab thing. Uh, so yeah, uh, now I'm going to show you guys the kills and the mechanics uh, about the Lava Strike Rooms, so let's get right into that. Okay, when you're looking at mechanics in Lava Strike Rooms, basically to start the fight, you're going to investigate the mound, and then until the first time the Lava Strike Room pulls you in, and you'll see that in a second, uh, you want to just use basic abilities. The reason for this is until slightly before he pulls you in the first time, and he pulls you in at a set point every time, uh, until he pulls you in, uh, you only deal half damage. So he's pulled you in, you click away before he jumps up, and now you can deal full damage again. Uh, so now after he's pulled you in and you've escaped the first time, uh, basically now you want to use your thresholds and you will just tear through them and finish off the kill just like that. Uh, so that's your general strategy for killing a Lava Strike one. And you'll see it again in just a second. Uh, but yeah, it works the, the same way. Basically, uh, regardless of what combat style you're using, uh, you also want to be praying mage, protect from magic, uh, because the mage attack is significantly stronger than the melee or range attacks. It hits a lot higher. Uh, the other thing, you can prayer flick, uh, kind of like on a jad, but it's generally not worth it. It's a lot of a lot of struggle. Uh, but as you can see, he pulls you in, uh, you run away before he jumps out at you, and then it is time to go with your thresholds. Uh, so yeah, that's what you want to do. And as you can see, the kill finishes off very, very, very quickly from that point on. 
Okay, at this point, I'm gonna show you guys the fastest and best way to escape PKers. Uh, you can do it in like less than 10 seconds. I'll even put a timer up. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna show you guys how to do that right about now. So you're minding your own business at strikes and then you see a PKer starts to attack you and you might want to throw in an, an, an anticipation, throw in a surge, run south, and you'll be out of there in no time at all. They won't, they won't even know where you went. Uh, you just dipped in about 14 seconds and you're back at Edgeville. Now, if you don't really feel like escaping, uh, know this, 90% of the people out here are, who are trying to PK you are horrible at PKing. Uh, even though they're labeled as a PKer, sometimes the tendency is to just run away and be like, no, I need to go bank and back to Edgeville. Usually you don't need to, and I'll show you, I'll show you a clip right now that happened just while I was trying to record the melee portion of this video. Um, but yeah, just keep that in mind. A lot of these PKers are not very good. It isn't single way combat. Uh, so yeah, anyway guys, um, there may be some foul language. Bruh, are you for real? I'm gonna fucking kick the shit out of you, bro. Boom! 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 Yeah, you better run, bitch! Anyway, guys, this this continued for an extremely long time, like at least 10-15 minutes. Uh, but basically, he kept trying to lure me into multi so his friends could get on me. But even when his friends got on me, I mean, they were terrible. Uh, but yeah, I just stuck around, messed him up a bit, wasted some of his food. Uh, but these PKers, I mean, he kept on teleblocking me. I wasn't even the slightest bit worried. Uh, as long as you don't panic, and I'm not even a great EOC PKer. I was just kind of chilling and trying out abilities and things. Uh, don't worry too much about it because there are a couple multi-combat zones and if they lure you in there You should be able to get out pretty easily. Just use freedom or anticipation and then run run the way out uh, But yeah, that's another thing um, If you don't feel like escaping you don't really want to go back all the way to Edgeville uh, A lot of the time if you fight back on these guys They will run away and they will cave and they will not bother you again uh, So that's never a bad idea either So as you can see I went back to strike rooms here and then a little bit later they come back and we do many more shenanigans uh, but yeah, that's kind of that's kind of how it goes. Uh, now, something to note: when you're killing the strike rooms, make sure your HP is relatively high throughout the whole kill. Uh, the reason for this is PKers they can PJ you mid fight. So if the strike room has you on 2,000 hit points, they can just walk in and one hit you. Uh, so watch out for that as well. But as you can see, they're back. I will spare you guys the next like 10 minutes of <laughs> of this shenanigans. Uh, but yeah, that's just uh, to say, don't don't worry. Even though the label is PKers, a lot of the time they are not going to be able to kill you. You've got the gear advantage as well because you're not sculled. Uh, but yeah, just make sure they don't lure you into multi and make sure they don't uh, try and skull you any any key ways. Okay, and now we're going into the notable drops. Uh, you get Searing Ashes always. They're currently selling for over 10k each, which is quite incredible. Uh, that's as of the beginning of March 2015. Uh, you can also get Worm Spikes, Worm Hearts, and Worm Scalps, which are between 20 and 140 mil, depending on what you're getting. Uh, they are extremely rare, uh, but also your chance to get them is doubled if you're on a Slayer task. So, you know, you can try your luck on them, and if you get one, well, you've just made some bank. Now, the other notable drops, you can get Fury Sharks, as well as Hard and Elite Clue Scrolls. Okay, so now I'm going to show you guys a brief calculation of the hourly profits uh, just from testing out this method. Okay guys, so to make this uh, profit approximation, basically what I did is with my Death Lotus darts, which is tier 85 weapons, I went and I did some kills. Uh, these kills were actually slower than my melee kills, but whatever, I did uh, one overload dose worth of kills, which is 6 minutes worth, and you guys will see me sell all the loot I got in that time, and then we'll multiply that by 10 and give you a rough approximation of how much money you can make here. Um, every hour, uh, and that is not including uh, getting any of the rare drops, which would obviously bump up that profit by quite a bit. Uh, so yeah, let's jump into me selling everything. Alrighty guys, here is me selling six minutes of Lava Strike Rooms. I also got a Fury Shark in there, which is obviously untradeable. Um, but yeah, uh, you guys will see the profits, and remember, this is the profit without getting uh, the special worm pieces. Uh, that's 234k, or 2.34 mil in an hour without any of the rare drops. Alright, that's about it for this guide. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. Hopefully you guys uh, are <laughs> good to go in the Lava Strike Rooms. Hopefully no one PKs you. And yeah, have a good one. Peace out. And as always, if you've got any questions or concerns, uh, feel free to put them in the comments down below and I will reply to them. Uh, so yeah, anyway guys, have a good one and peace.